Thank you. All righty. <clears throat> Good morning and welcome to the Muscatine County Board of Supervisors meeting. Today is Monday, June 28, 2021 at 9 a.m. The first item on the agenda is to review the agenda. Move to approve as presented. Motion by Joe. Second. Seconded by Scott. Any discussion? Hearing none, signify all those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? 4-0. <clears throat> Next item is discussion and possible action to approve the claims dated June 28, 2021 in the amount of $1,344,726.76. Any discussion? I will second then if Jeff had the motion. You move. No, all right, I got all right. I got the motion then. <laughs> motion by Scott, seconded by Jeff. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Opposed. Four zero. Next item is discussion and possible action to approve the change order for the Muscatine County Jail booking expansion project in the amount of eight hundred and twenty-two dollars with the Planning and Zoning Administrator, Eric Furness. Morning, Eric. Good morning. I guess I drew short straw on this one, get to actually be here this morning for it. Although okay. th this really stems from um, a design issue. Um, Mike was unable to be here, but he um, included, a, I think, a fairly comprehensive explanation for what what uh, drove this um, uh, I think we had some initial conversations with Mike and his design team uh, when the design concept was was new and we talked about a modular ceiling uh, product in this area and it made sense given the phasing of you know uh, of the area and w and we were all told that we would be able to just decide at install time where the necessary maintenance hatches would need to go and it was all part of that product that worked seamlessly uh, mike indicates that he made several attempts to reach out to the manufacturer to verify some things and wasn't getting much feedback from them um, i don't know that wasn't any of our roles that was something that him his design team were doing as they were putting the design together um, when we when the contractor got ready to start ordering product they found out that the access hatches that are that do work seamlessly are not just included with the tiles they're an option they're a little more money than the individual security deck tiles so that's what the change order and mike's explanation is they weren't told that on the front end um, and so i can only go with what we're all being told that's well, i think he gave a pretty good pretty thorough explanation in his in his packets yeah any any other questions or comments on this? So this is this is to access mechanicals and such yes. up in there, so we don't have a situation like we did in the other building. Yes, they're a lockable panel, yeah. um, but it does allow for immediate access, and we can put them wherever we want them. And Oscar and crew will be involved in design, deciding that with the contractors where we want them. So I'll move for the approval. Motion by Jeff. Second. Second by Doug. No other discussion. Um, all those in favor, signal for by aye. 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 Opposed? All right, while you're up there, <laughs> is that all right if you give us a little bit briefly? How are they coming along? Obviously, there's a lot of work going on from what we can see. Moving along, uh, security partitions been in place for about a week now. Um, they've started demo on uh, some of the concrete and floor, so um, a lot of uh, very tedious demolition and tight spaces in there um, have had some issues with weather you know we had to block a, one of the roof drains where they went up there we rerouted it through the sally port um, into the floor drain uh, we did have an issue with that backing up in the middle of the night where when we had a good uh, rain which was only about an inch but it did start coming out of that floor drain in the sally port we captured it on camera so I worked with Swanson and said that's not going to work over the weekend if we get a heavy rain so we pushed it out to the exterior of the building where it can dump into the alley because the floor drain is really not designed to take a roof drain <laughs> so uh, we resolved that pretty good so far um, had a little issue I guess right at the end of the day where they cut some electrical line accidentally and called Oscar and he was able to get right over there and get power back on to the jails and power went off but 
Um, overall, we're happy with communication. I think it's working well. It, it's working better. We're putting out fires before they get too big. Um, Swanson's been really good about contacting Captain McCleary. He contacts me when needed or Oscar or just handle stuff himself. So um, we've been happy with that that type of coordination. Eric, I read the uh, comments or discussion about the hardware where there's some rust on some doors and then they're going to chop and put some stainless on the bottom as a recommendation. I, I didn't see any change order on that. Is that something? Not yet. What's going on there? So in the design, um, we knew we kind of had a, you know, a set budget amount and we knew the prices were going up. There were some efforts made to specify pulling out door frames and window frames and reusing them as much as possible if they were usable. Um, and so there was a couple doors on the exterior of the building, doors and window frames that were spec to be pulled, saved, and reinstalled. And uh, when Swanson started cutting concrete around those and really getting in, you know, behind some of the concrete, there's some of them that are a little more rusty looking than they appeared from the outside. Our staff had done some patching and like used Bondo and sanded over the years to try to keep them nice looking and functional and repainted. So there's some concerns that they may not come out and stay in one piece. Um, while I agreed with holding, you know, trying to you reuse them as much as possible, I think it's gonna be better to repair some of these. Um, so there's a, a recommendation from some of those manufacturers to cut out the section. It's really just the section that's down low next to the sidewalks that gets the salt. Mm -hmm. Um, that's going to probably get worse in the future because of the, w the d new design of the sidewalk and driveway. It's going to be getting, continue to get salt. So they recommend cutting out that lowest. I think it's about eight inches from the hinge to the sidewalk and putting in stainless steel. Um, and I think that's going to be the most economical too. So that's probably going to be coming because there's a couple door frames that probably won't survive removal and reinstallation. Okay. It was all based on an attempt to try to, to try to use existing components over again if we could. Um, well, that's always the challenge in any renovation. You can only see what you can yeah. see, and without doing destructive tests, so, you don't know. What's yeah. Behind. So there, you know, I, I want to be fair. There was a, a fair amount of an attempt to to use components, hardware, door frames, glass, you know, and not buy new if it was still in workable condition. Well, so I saw some discussion, uh, and I didn't understand everything on the. On the window, there's a there's a window also that was in yeah. question, and Captain McCleary said we're going to roll with it. Or yeah, we all looked at it. It was something, and this I, I can appreciate this about Swanson. They're seeing little things that don't look like brand new anymore. So they're saying, hey, before we take this out, what do you want to make a judgment call? This is what we're seeing when we expose the backside of this frame. You know, instead of just putting it back and hide, they're not. It's obvious they're not trying to hide anything from us. They're bringing it to our attention. So we took a closer look. There's just some slight delamination on some of the security glass. Mike, Captain uh, McCleary, and myself all looked at it. There's no security concerns. And given the nature of the budget, we think it's something that we can just put a uh, like a sticky note in our maintenance files and maybe address in three to five years. Because they're just a they're a completely module module um, modular sorry window unit that can be replaced at any time. And so we're going to try to get all the mileage out of it we can. We think it can be reused, but it's just something Swanson brought to our attention. Okay. Thank you. Well, that communication is a big plus. That's so glad to hear that yeah. they're, they're making those attempts and we're actually having a good good feedback from that. So I appreciate that work and, and that information for us. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, next item is items with the county engineer, uh, Keith White. And the first item is uh, discussion and possible action to approve the various utility permits. Good morning. Good morning, Pete. We have one utility permit this morning, which is from Eastern Iowa Light and Power of Wilton, Iowa. And they're setting new poles on Seven Springs Road, replacing uh, old overhead. And then on 215th Street, they're plowing in uh, cable, and uh, we have some culverts that are very deep there that they are going over the top that we don't normally allow, and they're aware that for the future that we don't normally allow that, but that's what we have. Okay. I'll move to approve. <coughs> Second. Motion by Jeff. Second by Scott. Any discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Any projects update? Projects update on our <clears throat> crack sealing. Uh, the contractor uh, saw it and sealed uh, New Era last week, and someone, Zachary, and uh, Zachary's about 75% done, should get finished this week. Uh, Pelling had finished up seal coat work. And then our G28 project, uh, still in the closeout phase. The DOT will not sign the 435 until the trail access ramp is removed and photos are taken. <laughs> and if you want background, more background on that, I can give it to you, or you can just throw your arms up and say, okay. We're happy with your decision. We trust your judgment. <laughs> so we'll move forward with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we, we went all the way to D.C. and the ADA guru who said, no, you don't need to do that. But the DOT said, you have a funding agreement with us and you will do what we say. So that's the short of it. So <laughs> Again, we're, there we have it. That trail is, goes to nowhere and uh, it's unsafe. And I did use. call the city and let them know that we're going to be doing that. I will bring it up in the next trails committee meeting. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, have one uh, acquisition contract, the one that I spoke of the last time I was here to get a signature on, and that's all I have. I'd just like to comment, if I could, please. Uh, the contractors with the crack sealing out of New Era, I, I traveled that quite a bit when they were doing that. I thought they did an outstanding job. I thought their staff did an outstanding job of traffic control and keeping it that uh, the public and the ag equipment moving on that um, I just I can't say enough good about what I saw there um, next point I'd like to bring up <coughs> is the county doing some spot spraying in regard to thistles and that yes they had been and but not with it raining but yeah. yeah and and I've I've traveled quite a few miles out there and I've seen this and I, I, I wasn't sure if uh, if uh, the county was doing uh, this or if if uh, landowners were doing this but there's enough volume out there I thought the county's got to be spot spraying these and and I really enjoy seeing that because uh, everybody's got to do their job on these darn thistles and the, the thistles this year are they're a little on the bad side yeah. mm -hmm. so I appreciate that yeah that would be uh, Bruce Bryant our yeah. roadside manager weed commissioner he's been spraying yeah thank you you bet any other questions or comments for Keith? Hearing none, thank you, Keith. All right, uh, the next item is discussion and possible action to approve the minutes of June 21st, 2021 regular meeting. So moved. Second. <coughs> Motion by Jeff, seconded by Nathan. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Five zero. Okay. Next item is correspondence. Um, Jeff? Uh, nothing to note. Nathan? I just had an inquiry from a resident about the opening on the Veterans Affairs Commission. That was it. Um, go on that paper real quick. I had um, had an email on the follow up for the 2080 from uh, Jim on the 2080 agreement. Um, with the with the city, and um, I'm going to see if maybe you can join us on that meeting if you have. Is that tomorrow night? It's tomorrow night, yeah. That's Is possible. That here? It's just Zoom. Oh, it's Zoom. Zoom. Yeah, you need to send me the link. Now. Yeah, I'll I'll follow up and send you that link. There's just a couple good questions that I thought you brought up on that, so <clears throat> just want to make sure that we have some clarity was, on that. I watched the, I was at the council meeting the other night, and there was a pretty thorough discussion on contracts and contractor with the. Uh, they're going to extend by six months and it looks like they're getting ready to redo that contract because the last time there were some performance issues yep. with the previous so the previous were, contractor they ended up um, yeah throwing out of there or something. out with and, and got this new contractor and I think they've had a really good feedback mm -hmm. it's just more around me wanting to make sure that that all the you know the I's are dotted T's are crossed mm -hmm. on things that I've, I'm not aware of under a legal standpoint that's mm -hmm. I wanted you to look at that 2080 
and and yeah, they're they're moving forward with with uh, the remediation and all of those things that they're they're kind of going through. So I kind of want to just make sure that we're having all those things addressed. So good. Um, also had a uh, a small informal meeting with the mayor and a Zoom meeting from this group called Power Up Education Forum. It was informational. I thought in the fact that they are showing what the you know clean energy across the state of Iowa is doing by portions of you know solar wind and they're just kind of informing us about what they had and so I thought it was an interesting piece that I asked them just to share you know what st what statistics they had um, I think the mayor asked if they had actually contacted the Muscatine Power and Water and they said they had not yet since they're just a group out of Des Moines that's just sharing information and not trying to push anything it was more just educational that's all I had for uh, I've this. got a couple things <clears throat> I had a resident contact me in regard to out on Kia Cuck and in a nutshell uh, would like to see uh, a decision made would like to see Kia Cuck open and I said there's more discussion coming down the pipe on that and I said that that situation is a little more complex than what meets the eye um, the other one I had I had a incredibly frustrated resident that talked to me about an issue on what I call a Durant blacktop which is just bail north of 61 to Durant um, and there was a group of four bicycle riders and that group of bicycle riders um, were riding four breast <clears throat> and anybody that's, that's that's driven that road knows that that's is is just some some uh, uh, rolling little hills that go north there and there's an S curve towards the north and the, the, the a whole lot of that is is a no passing zone and uh, there were three motorists that were backed up behind these bicyclists <clears throat> prior to this one and this individual said it was an absolute miracle that there was an accident and no one was killed because the motorists, motorists were so frustrated that the bicyclist would not single file up and, and get into the right hand side of their lane to allow these motorists to slip around um, uh, even going into a no passing zone or something that uh, there were motorists literally passing them at crowns of the hills and it was horrid absolutely horrid and uh, uh, this individual drove back from uh, from Durant coming south as I understood it um, majority of the, of the way 25 to 30 miles an hour and was less than pleased over that situation that took place that didn't have to happen it just didn't have to happen so we, I think we just need to tell everybody just just to be more courteous to everyone that uses the road because that, that's a situation where I could tell tempers were, were heating up and there were some bad choices made by motorists out of frustration. And uh, so I, I just want to stress to, to all the bicyclists and all the motorists, you know, with, uh, and with ag equipment the same way, you know, be conscientious of everyone on the road and, uh, you know, Use some common sense. I, I, I was disappointed to hear that, that uh, the bicyclist continued to ride four, four abreast from the center line to the shoulder and completely blocked that off. That's, that, that just, we got to use better judgment than that, folks. That's all I have. I had an email that Corey Kilberg cc'd me on about the nature trail out of Nichols, and that's all i had i also had a email i have on my notes email on new emails <laughs> but actually what that is 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 email on the new email forms that we have to um, send to bill <clears throat> knowing that we're actually our emails are going to change so if, if individuals have our previous emails and want to contact us we will go to a, a standard email that will hopefully will be published on the website or something that will, be. That will identify our new emails in regards to being in um, alignment with what our actual account website is. Um, 
meetings? Hold on. Uh, Doug? None. Um, I had on Wednesday the 23rd, I had by state. That was all. <clears throat> on the 23rd, I had uh, by state as well, too. And uh, on the 24th, I had a uh, we leave. Nathan? On the 23rd, I had the Finance Committee of the Mississippi Valley Workforce Authority Board. And that was all. Okay. Jeff? Uh, Monday the 21st, we had the Eastern Iowa Mental Health Region. I will note that the uh, management team brought to the board and the governing board approved a uh, contract to, it's not, not fully approved, but basically uh, for the children's services, we know we have by July 1st, we need to have a children's coordinator on. We went out for with an RFP to hire a person, got limited response, no, no real response to the actual RFP. So now that we've reached out in, under our current contract with RFP, you know, legals looked at it, said we could do that, and they're going to contract with Robert Young Center, kind of like they did with the adult services to create a system for the children and then. I believe this Friday uh, we're going to have a proposal from Robert Young Center flushing out the dollars, but we've approved the contract and have them as the coordinator at this point, and now we have to get through the contract dollars. I'm glad to hear they were allowed to, or invited to bid at some point. Yep, yep. So that's on its way. Um, that's it. Let's update the yep. progress moves on that. So. All right, um, next item is uh, items to the administration office. And the first item is discussion and possible action to approve the appointments to the Muscatine County Compensation Commission for the period of July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. And you have a list of um, people who were already serving who did not respond that they, they wanted to just stop serving and we, I, we, Put out feelers everywhere to try to attract new members. We got we sent letters to all the banks. We sent letters to the uh, the realtors. Uh, we got one additional name that way. So we're still short in all of our categories. And remind me, uh, Nancy, this does not always meet. The only when there is a condemnation issue. This is a pool. So when there is a condemnation, the judge draws from this pool. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And would you know the last time that even happened? Um, I wouldn't. I can find out for you, but I know it no, doesn't happen bother. very often. If you yeah, can't remember, it's, it's, it's been, been a long time. That's the indicator we need, yeah. Okay. What was the last condemnation? Have you done one here? Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> Probably 20 it's years. One of, it's one of those appointments that you could, you could put on a resume that you may not really have. <laughs> that you... All right, so the, the public knows on that one. So it's a, not a meeting a lot type of a group. So so we need a possible action, so a motion to approve that? Uh, move to approve. All right, motion by Jeff. Second. Seconded by Scott. Hearing no discussion. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Appointments passed. Next item is discussion and possible action to approve the reappointment of Tony Bruss to the benefited fire district number six board of trustees for a three year term ending June 30th, 2024. And this has already been approved by the Scott County Board of Supervisors. I'll move to approve. Second. Well, motion by Jeff, seconded by Scott. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0. The next item is discussion and possible action to appoint Michelle Servadio Elias to the Muscatine County Veteran Affairs Commission for a three-year term ending June 30th, 2024. So moved. Second. Motion by Jeff, seconded by Nathan. Any discussion? I'd just like to thank all those volunteers for these various commissions and boards for their willingness to serve. Thank you, Jeff. Good. All right, so on that, motion by Jeff, seconded by Nathan for Michelle Servadio Elias's appointment. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. Thank you again for that. Discussion and possible action to approve the resolution number six, 
28-21-01 FY21-22 budget appropriations. Um, Nancy, what does that mean? This is this essentially gives the uh, <coughs> department's permission to spend the money that you budgeted for the next fiscal year. Nancy, the only question I had on that and reading through, I saw the mental health uh, allocation. So does does the and I know they're still up in the air how we're going to do everything on that, but that all has to be, those funds have to be pooled so that that doesn't really have an effect because we're still, we have the tax dollars, we still have to send the funds, right? right? Yep. Okay. And then does the, does the fact that this, that we're going to reduce our levy uh, and state is going to fill some of that funding? So does that, uh, maybe we just don't know if the state sends the funding to us and then we right. pass it through. Right. We this, don't know how that works. This is just authorizes to spend what we have. As budget. Right. And if, if that changes because of the mental health thing, then there'll simply be less for them to spend. So if you recall, we budgeted the per capita that Muscatine County is allowed to budge, budget for mental health services. Yeah. And in the new legislation, the state which would have been $30 and some change a month, 30, 78 or 30, 68, something like that per capita. And the with the state's legislation this year, uh, we're going to 21 bucks, 21.78, I think it is per capita. Mm -hmm. So that should reduce our county levy. And then the state is gonna backfill those dollars. I don't think everything has been written on that, exactly how that money transfer is gonna work. And that was why questions on that one so, question I had about that that change is that mandatory reduction of levy something that's permanent going forward and we're completely reliant for that shortfall in the state's backfill so do we know that no the, the state other? is gonna uh, next year is it so the 2022 what the next budget we certify uh, will certify zero dollars for mental the mental health just that's fund the transition goes, it goes all yep. the way to right. all 100 percent to the okay. state Okay. Yeah. 100 percent goes away. 100 percent. Yeah. They're going to be fully responsible than partially yeah, responsible. Yeah. They will be fully but this responsible. Year we're still going to be partially right. responsible. Right. 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 No. And that's is that the way. I read that, that. I the governing sure board is going to be responsible for this for this expenditure of the funds and the management mm -hmm. of the funds, but the, the funding will all be provided through the state. Okay. So it'll come as a property tax relief, which I actually think is a is a good thing because. You know, as many people know, your fixed income people get hit hard with property tax <coughs> yeah. because they can't avoid it. Yeah. Uh, so it moves it more to a statewide formula, which will get more out of income and sales tax. Well, and the nice thing about that is the state has shown willingness to renege on its backfill commitments when there are partial funding issues involved. But to renege here would involve total abandonment of the state by uh, from its commitment to... Yeah, and they have a they they have already given a three year. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing I don't remember the percent a year one and a half two percent a year increase. So, so they've already put those numbers out there. Yep. And actually, in our region, so the the mental the Eastern Iowa mental health region, you know, as as you may recall, you know, one of our challenges with with the per capita cap, we've been unable to add some of the mandatory services. Mm -hmm. And we pick up about a million and a half extra dollars through the state pulling this over and taking funding so that we are actually able to pull move forward with the children's services. And, and again, you know, with COVID and the impacts of COVID last year, we got a larger budget surplus than we did have. So um, the only thing I was a little disappointed in is the, the, the budget fund balance legislation didn't get changed adequately in my mind so that's still going to cause some potential issues but uh state's got to fund it so they'll figure out that what they did to themselves pretty soon all righty okay thanks so i'll move to approve i don't think we have all right that. so we have a motion by <coughs> jeff second seconded by scott this is for resolution 628-2101 and this is a roll call vote jeff Scott? Aye. I vote aye. Nathan? Aye. And Jeff? Aye. All right. Uh, resolution 5 0 passes. Okay, the uh, <clears throat> discussion in regarding the process of disposing of the county owned re real property. Okay, so in talking with Jim, um, what the code requires is that the board hold that public hearing when you have an actual 
offer. offer that you're considering. So at this point, in order to move this forward, I, my questions for you is, do you want to get an appraisal done of the property? Um, we, ha we have to determine the, the selection of a realtor and then we need to talk about what we want the asking price to be. And um, per Jim, we can talk about that asking price in closed session. Um, but before I schedule a closed session to do that, I, I guess I want some direction about how you want to come up with that asking price. How much is an appraisal probably estimated for, if you guys know? About 2,500 bucks minimum yeah. for a commercial appraisal. And about you're looking at analysis, you can kind of do a market drive by. You could get a you could get a commercial realtor mm. if you want to engage in one. They'd come by and do that probably for free. If you do a formal appraisal, it's yeah. twenty five hundred bucks, and it take you about six to eight weeks to get it done. So, what do we my advice would be: we do a market analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, again, that's why it's, that's why we're, we're doing, doing that with community services on any properties that we dis we dispose of on behalf of somebody mm. that's a client in a conservatorship. We're having two market appraisals done that allows us to get an idea what the property is, get it listed, and then get it sold, and then be in that report to the court. So that's where that's I think awesome. those are. About so you you actually there. have a process already, and well, we do with community services that I implemented when we started disposing of these properties. So oh, we yeah. had some we had some procedure to uh, establish a price, you know, because it's it's right. you don't know it's the same problem. Right. So and how we, much did you say those? I, we were paying 125 for, for one of them, yeah. but that's, you know, it's a kind of, a, I call it drive-by, but they do do a formal report mm -hmm. of comparable properties, and they're not <coughs> bulletproof, but they're, they're better than just taking their yes. There's no commitment to list no. or anything for <coughs> that agency, so it's it's just a pay-for-service, basically. And you decide who you're going to use to list it as the next. Well, that sounds like a, I think a path we should move forward. Yeah, I, I like I like yeah, that. I like that. We already have two. That's two two people kind of. Yeah, and that ones, way so that, you you, know, you yeah. get a range. I mean, you can get. Yeah. Them, I've seen very close ranges, and I've seen uh, ranges from you know fifty to eighty and seventy to a hundred, and so you have some overlap, but not not you know you you have you do can have a difference of opinion. Yeah, I think, and then we can turn around and get something like that within the next couple of weeks. Probably yeah, they are usually pretty quick. So I've used a couple of people in town, uh, what, four times now, or uh, Felicia has. Uh, okay. For the ones that so then we have somebody we can reach out to already, Nancy, I believe. Yeah, no, it's, it's familiar with the process and what our expectations are. And yep. We could go mm -hmm. ahead and get that done. And I, gave, I gave Nancy, I think I gave you those names of the two people that we've used. I don't think you did. Oh, okay. But you will, if you didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought I, I, thought I did. All right, so if, <coughs> if yeah, if we could move with that, yeah, I like that as a process, and then we get a market analysis, and then we can mm -hmm. we can have. And then you say, Jim, that would be acceptable for closed session. We could come in and right. well, we have that that's really if you get an offer. Yeah. It, well, yeah. Well, you I can mean, have a closed session if you to to determine right. what right. So what you want to, to list it as, mm -hmm. and yeah. then and then the other issue would be the selection of a realtor and yeah. how you want to do that because you don't want to you know obviously disadvantage your negotiation position on an asking price by putting it in the public meeting. Yeah. So right. You wouldn't take action on accepting an offer, it would just be a discussion on the yep. pricing. Yep. Yep. All right, I think that's good. Yep, I think I have some direction. Is that the only thought meeting. process that we have on uh, on that is, is uh, getting a, a value determined um, uh, and listing it, or do we want to think about uh, uh, taking bids on it possibly. That's entirely up to you. Guys. And then uh, see what seeing, seeing what that process brings to the forefront, and uh, the uh, you know obviously let your depending on your participation, let your top three bidders. Um, um, you mean like an auction or something? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's commonly like a, a sealed yeah. bid type thing. I personally like that the best myself personally, but that's just my opinion. I, I guess my, and I and I think that, that that's a potential. I think at least I would find. <clears throat> I'd like to know at least what some sort of that market. Well, you, so that's, that's, that's what I said. So I yeah. think you know the, you know because this is a different type of property, and I'm thinking through, of you know familiar with both pro processes. So typically in an auction process, 
very similar. You're going to get an auction service that's going to give you an estimate of value, or you'll have a notion. But but then they typically, for their fee, they will typically hold the inspections and look review because if you list, and I don't know if Felicia deals with that with uh, other properties, you know, then somebody has to let people in, let them view it. And the auction services, normally they blast it out <coughs> and they set up times for viewings and if you want to come, you come see and people are allowed there and they can Q&A and so that's, that might be less taxing on staff. Well, normally how it's done <coughs> is the, the, the property, the facility, you will set two or three dates and the window is a couple hours. Interested parties can, can come at that particular time frame if they're interested or not to view. And so it isn't a, a huge load on an individual or a, or a uh, uh, whoever's going to be taking care of that. What I like about it is um, the uh, individuals are able to take and uh, raise their bids. Oh, because it's a bidding process. Raise your bids on the on, on the bid process. That's what I like about so it. So like if we were to sell it for twenty dollars, I'm just gonna throw a number up, they can come back and say, Oh, I want twenty two. You'll take your you'll take your top bidders, whatever you whatever you select, and you will uh, uh, have those come into uh, 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 possibly Jim's office and it's a very simple process. Thinking back through, you know, when this board has disposed of properties in the past um, and how the process went, um, I think that, you know, if as long as Jim would say that that's probably an acceptable process, I think that would have probably been a, uh, a better process than when we'd done it before uh, and probably have a, a good result with less effort. I couldn't agree more, and that's why I brought this to light. Yeah. I, like, yeah, I, I think like it's it. an acceptable process to dispose of it. To me, it's just get an idea of what the value is, mm -hmm. deciding the process you're going to use, whether it's a realtor or, or an auctioneer, go through those details. Because all you're interested to do is maximizing your return on whatever. Mm -hmm. whatever yeah, exactly. But your suggestion is that we don't even go through an auctioneer, correct? Yes. That would Essentially, be well, we could, yes. Jim and that or would I would correct. serve us as the auctioneer. Well, let me hear your voice first. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, 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 it's just a matter of um, you will you will uh, allow the individuals to uh, raise their bid. Uh, you will set a a dollar denomination of what a uh, what the minimum bid could be. I mean, it could be um, probably no less than a hundred dollars. Uh, many times it's 250 or 500 that speeds the process up uh, quite a bit and uh, it's a very simple process it's, it's just you, open market you also eliminate fees right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I've done it in never states yeah right <laughs> so, <laughs> farm in particular, uh, people you know it, it really depends on your demand and and right. I mean, that really is what drives and, and But that's not going to change, Jim, because no. if there's no demand, there's no, there's no, no demand. The on the sales side. There's, no de there's no buyer, no matter how you play the game. Yeah, yeah it's just if, at that point you've got somebody. There'll be demand on this property, yeah, I can no, assure I, you. I, yeah, I don't know, but it, to me it's whether we do it ourselves as a bid or whether we do an auctioneer or whether we do a uh, real estate agent. That, so, so the only... That the only you know, if I think about I think about listing, or I think about an auctioneer versus Jim and Nancy. No offense, but but then I think about the marketing of the property and the fact that it is available. Um, <coughs> property, like you know, how will people know? Uh, what would the reach be? How would they get to that? Is there a value in that? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I think we find out what it's worth, and then what we what the market analysis says, and then we make a decision. And right. you don't have to. You can do it that way. And you, you don't have get to get what you want. You don't have to sell it. You don't have to sell it. Do what you want. You know. Keep I'm 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 very confident that that property will sell to a somewhat local person. I would. Oh, yeah. I was. I'm very confident of that. And uh, um, I think. I mean. I think. 
I, I, I think we should at least do the market analysis and then let's have yeah, a little more information on both sides, what, yeah. Yeah. what we think, because obviously we still have time to make that decision, but I think that would be, you know, how do we, how do we get the maximized value out of this or how do we get the maximized value? At the, at the end of the day, we want to get the most amount of money for that property because it's that's tax a, dollars that's that a we very, want to make sure. So. That's a very high traffic yep. street yep. and a very nice four by four sign there, professionally done. Uh, we'll, uh, uh You're already marketing in here. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a volunteer. Kind of Where thing. you go? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, I'm so, familiar with a little, little bit of this. You can't tell. I think, Nancy, we have some direction yep. for the first part, and then we'll kind of follow mm -hmm. up from yep. those next steps. All right. Uh, moving on to <clears throat> any other items, Nancy? That I you don't have? have anything else. Okay. The next item is receive information from county employees. Good morning. I just wanted to bring to the attention of the board that the Iowa Homeland Security and Emergency Management has changed their statewide emergency notification system. It was WINS as the wireless emergency notification system, and now they're changing to a RAVE mobile safety. And one of the unique things about this uh, new system that's going to go into effect July 1st is the previous was just a text. Uh, with this, you're able to go through uh, text, voice, an app, or emails. You're also able to get it translated into different languages. So the information that I presented to you, just something to go through. Uh, there are several options uh, of doing signing up, and I strongly encourage residents we have taken those who were on the old system and notified them to change over. Uh, we've done this through Chris Jasper with Muscom. State has also sent these notifications out. You can also go to the Muscatine County Emergency Management website. There is a Alert Iowa information. Click on that. It'll take you to a, a page where you can sign up. Just go to Muscatine County. And it, it, this is a process to go through. Something that uh, I think is it's really a, a great tool to have. This does not replace our outdoor warning system. It's just another means of, depending on what you want to sign up for, what type of alerts, uh, anything that comes through the National Weather Service, it'll just instantly notify you. So, so this is something I wanted to, to let the board be aware of. Right. Thank you, I have a question while you're right here, if you would, please. Um, I'm curious on, a, on another note on this, on this COVID and this PPO equipment. Um, seeing things seem to be tapering down on the COVID risk from what I've been watching and, and uh, um, following along. What and how is the plan, and you can come back to the board with this at, at, a, at a point in time, in the near future what and how is the plan to distribute out any of this overstock of ppo equipment that we have which i i know that i don't know what the inventory is but maybe you can get an inventory for us of, of what we have and what your plans are and how you're going to distribute this and where it's going to go because this product in my mind unless it's used and goes to places that can use this product Shelf life. It has zero value mm -hmm. unless you use it. Mm -hmm. So, in my mind, I would like to see this go to good use and move forward. Yeah. Well, one thing that the, the state of Iowa did with their, their stockpile that they had is they sent out a questionnaire or a survey to the Tier 1 which included that the, the tier one was the, the hospitals, nursing homes, uh, EMS, fire departments. They sent out a survey and really went directly to those people in Muscatine County. We have this, we're getting rid of our, our warehouse in Des Moines. And it came back that I was notified that we had eight pallets 
at our District 5 region warehouse, which was in Ostaloosa. So about a week and a half ago, uh, I was fortunate to be able to use the county's 16-foot uh, trailer and travel there, bring it back, and I'm in the process of distributing it. Uh, I believe we've got probably about 325 to 340 boxes, so they, the, the state is going through these different tiers. They just sent a survey out to uh, the tier three, which was the PSAPs, uh, law enforcement corrections. I have not heard anything from the state at that time, but it's a very good point uh, that what I have, you know, I, I'm definitely gonna look at trying to utilize that equipment and get that equipment to the appropriate. So, so these eight pallets you picked up, Brian, have all been earmarked or allocated to organizations locally and you're, dis you're handling the distribution to those agencies? Right, there was really no direct involvement with local emergency management. It was just strictly, strictly the state reached out to these entities and they said, yeah, we want all this. And then <coughs> I'm in the process where I picked it up I have it at, uh, fortunately, the, the city of Muscatine has allowed me a, an area to, to store it, and we're just trying to get that picked up today. Last week was a little bit difficult trying to t transition into this alert aisle and everything, so hopefully I can get that. So by the distribution, is the entities are coming to the product and picking it up? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would think you'd be able to take and, and get this distributed to hospitals, um, care facilities, and the schools throughout the entire county. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know the type of volume that you have. What's your guess on that it would take to distribute this uh, within six months or a year? I would say so. I, I, I just don't know what the usage is on that. I wouldn't think it would take longer than a year to, to get that all uh, uh, taken care of because there's no sense Mm -hmm. and not using this product mm -hmm. okay one of the things that i have done and through my the muscatine county emergency management commission i do have a, a grant that i was able to apply for and today i will be picking up a, a six by ten foot enclosed trailer one of the intentions that i want to use that trailer for is to take some of this ppe that i have and have that trailer situated somewhere in the county for a situation. Let's say a tornado comes through Muscatine County. It hits West Liberty, it hits Adalissa, it hits Wilton. With this trailer, whatever PPE I have, I can store at a location, uh, still working to get it inside of a building so it's climate controlled, but it's a mass casualty situation where that trailer can go at that location. This is something that I wanted to do for emergency management. We don't have that right now where we can take something and move it in a, in a situation. But no very good points that you had and I will certainly look at that. All right, thank you. Brian. Thank you. All right, uh, any other information from county employees? Jim Barry. Thank you. Just a couple things. Um, just an FYI, we will be back to what I would consider to be normal court operations at the courthouse on July 6th. Uh, so we'll be hopefully done utilizing the uh, central auditorium as our jury selection location. Uh, we have another one scheduled Wednesday to select there this week, but after the holiday, we should be back to the courthouse barring any further changes. I wanted the reason I wanted to get up here was again to thank the school Mustang School District for their cooperation and this uh, they've been invaluable uh, in the process and have been extremely helpful uh, in working with us throughout and I've been to the City Council and excuse me the school board and told them that and I've been I've, I've talked to the superintendent directly myself as well but I wanted to reiterate that here uh, publicly for the Board of Supervisors because that, that certainly was a, a venue that made things easier for everybody and certainly more cost effective uh, for, for the county in that process. 
So I would say that. Uh, secondly, I think we're to the point where we have determined the signage for the courthouse relative to the public, non-public areas. We passed that uh, here a, a month ago or so, and I think we've identified the signage so that people are aware uh, in public places where uh, things or electronic devices are able to be used and in non-public places where electronics are not to be used for the recording of personnel and doing other things in, in, the, in the courthouse. So we're following through on that and I know Sherry was looking to get the signs ordered and we'll get them, maintenance will get them placed. So both of those things are, that's a status update. Well, thank right. you so much. Thank you. Well, congratulations on your verdict. Yeah, well, I didn't do much. <laughs> any <laughs> other <laughs> any other uh, county employees? Okay, now it's time for item number 11, receive comments from the public. Hearing none, uh, anything else from the board before we go into a recess before closed session? I do want to note that we will not have a meeting next week. Um, as it will be a holiday for us, so we won't be meeting. Uh, following up after, yeah, if you were to show up, you wouldn't be I'd, here. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> I'll guarantee you that. Yeah. All right. Well, again, yeah, the best thing they ever did is get with those night <coughs> morning meetings. I don't know if I was coming or going some of them Mondays. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> we will we will take a five minute recess prior to going into a closed session uh, in performance evaluation.